With a tap dancing father, actress mother, and opera singing grandmother, these four sisters were certainly destined from birth to create their own artistic success. Born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Sister Sledge, consisting of the four Sledge girls, ranging in ages from 12 to 16, officially formed in 1971. The family also included a fifth daughter that the girl's mother had before marrying their father. Edwin and Flores Sledge's daughters, Deborah, also known as Debbie, Joan, also known as Joni, Kim, and Kathy, started out taking their cues from their grandmother, Viola Williams. Under her guidance, they sang regularly at their church and performed at various community functions throughout Philly. Everywhere they went, everyone knew who they were as they went by the name Mrs. Williams' grandchildren. Debbie told Glamour in 2022, We always sang, but my grandmother taught us about breath control, vocal ability, being able to build, and diction. Before long, they formed a band, and with Debbie serving as vocal arranger, Joni as artistic director, and their mother as manager, Sister Sledge was born. The group then toured much of the East Coast, including the New York, New Jersey area, and of course, their hometown of Philadelphia. The sisters never neglected their studies, though. They all went on to graduate from Olney High School, as well as all complete their undergraduate studies at Temple University. The girl's first professional single release, called Time Will Tell, came out in 1971. It went nowhere. Two years later, they dropped another track, Mama Never Told Me. The song produced moderate results with a top 20 placement on the UK chart. Their next release though, Love Don't Go Through No Changes On Me, would give the siblings their first taste of commercial success in the US. The song also became a big hit in Japan, and as a result, the girls were flown to the country to perform at the Tokyo Music Festival. They even won the prestigious Silver Prize. The sisters got to perform at the three-day live music festival Zaire 74, taking place in the Central African country. The concert was meant to be a major promotional event for the heavyweight boxing championship match between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, famously known as the Rumble in the Jungle. Sister Sledge's debut album, Circle of Love, was released by Atco, a subsidiary of Atlantic Records, in 1975. Their follow-up album, titled Together, dropped two years later. Released through yet another Atlantic subsidiary, the Cotillion label, the album only produced a minor hit with the single Blockbuster Boy. Now, after nearly eight years of hard work with very minimal accomplishments, the group questioned if they should continue and started to think about taking their lives in a different direction. Kim even enrolled in law school. Atlantic Records, though, wasn't willing to give up. They decided to connect the girls with producers Mal Rogers and Bernard Williams of the disco funk band Chic. The collaboration would change everything for Sister Sledge in a major way. We Are Family, the sisters' third album, and produced by Niall and Bernard, was released in January 1979. The lead single, He's the Greatest Dancer, charted at number one on the R&B chart and made it into the top 10 on the Hot 100. A couple of months later, the record's title track followed and became a worldwide smash. It rose to number two on the Hot 100, number one on the R&B chart, and received a Grammy nomination. We are The album became certified platinum and produced two more classic disco singles, Lost in Music and Thinking of You. Sister Sledge continued to release several albums throughout the 80s. None of them reached platinum or gold status, and only a few singles did moderately well on the R&B chart. Their main standouts would be the Hot 100 Top 30 track, My Guy, a cover of the Mary Wells classic, off their 1982 album, The Sisters, and Frankie, off their 1985 album, When the Boys Meet the Girls. It went to number one in the UK and also achieved gold status there. Then in 1989, Kathy went solo. Even though she would still be active with Sister Sledge from time to time, this move would have a negative impact on her relationship with her sisters for decades to come. We'll get into those details a little later. Sister Sledge recordings would then become sporadic from this moment onward. Debbie, Joni, and Kim continued to perform as Sister Sledge and in 1992 collaborated with Jean-Paul Monique, better known by his stage name Bluey from UK Acid Jazz Group Incognito, on the single World Rise and Shine. 
The song is featured on the Sister's Greatest Hits album, released that same year titled, And Now Sledge Again. The single reached number one in Italy and resulted in the trio starring in their own TV show there. The group's next studio album release would be largely overlooked commercially, but still stand out as one of their greatest achievements. 1998's African Eyes, produced by Joni, would contain their 1992 hit, World Rise and Shine, and garner much critical acclaim. The 2000s and 2010s would bring a variety of high and low experiences for the ladies of Sister Sledge. All four members reunited in the studio to record their last album to date, titled Style, in 2003. Kim then took some time out from the group. The reason for her absence was quite serious. She'd become very ill with the H1N1 virus, commonly known as swine flu, in 2010. While she was being treated for it, however, she then contracted pneumonia and had to be admitted into an intensive care unit. Things then went from bad to worse when she also contracted a rare fungal infection. Kim's always had strong faith throughout her life, eventually deciding to become an ordained minister after the group's fame began to die down. She believes without a doubt that her faith got her through the horrific ordeal. In the meantime, Joni and Debbie continued to tour together with various guest artists, including Debbie's daughter. The ladies banded together in 2012 to file a major class action lawsuit against Warner Music Group, alleging they were cheated out of millions of dollars based on improper calculations of revenue from digital music sales. The suit was eventually settled in the ladies' favor for $11.5 million. When Pope Francis visited the U.S. in 2015, Philadelphia was one of his stops. When Sister Sledge was asked to perform We Are Family for him, Debbie, Joni, and Kim would take to the stage, but Kathy would not be present. According to a press release sent on Kathy's behalf, her sisters refused to allow her to participate. Sadly, on March 10, 2017, Joni Sledge passed away at her home in Phoenix, Arizona. She was 60 years old. Thankfully, just a couple of months before her passing, her, Debbie, Kim, and Kathy got together and hugged things out. Her family issued the following statement concerning the cause of death. The medical examiner and Joni's personal physician determined on 10th March 2017 that her death was due to natural causes, which arose from complications from a pre-existing condition. Please continue to respect the family's request for peaceful privacy during this very difficult time. Thank you and God bless you. What could be looked at as a final farewell to Joni that same year, We Are Family was selected for preservation in the National Recording Registry by the Library of Congress for being culturally, historically, or artistically significant. Following Joni's death, Debbie and Kim announced that they would continue to perform as Sister Sledge. And they did, but not for long. In the summer of 2021, Kathy celebrated a significant victory. She was finally able to tour using the name Sister Sledge, which she was previously not allowed to do. Finally, because of some of the madness with the sisters, I was allowed to use the brand. It was crazy. For like the past 20 years as a corporation, they voted that I was the only sister that couldn't say I was of Sister Sledge or from Sister Sledge. Since Kathy went solo in 1989, a wedge slowly began to form between her and her sisters. Rumors suggest that they felt abandoned and resentful over her solo endeavors. In 2020, Kathy confirmed as much in an interview with Pop Matters. I never left my sisters. I was given an ultimatum. When I did a solo project, I was given an offer. I wanted to take that chance. I went to my sisters and said, I really want to do this. I was told, no, you cannot. If you do it, you got to go. Later, when Kathy went to use their group name to advertise her appearances, her sisters put a stop to it through a lawsuit. Although Kathy would still occasionally join her sisters on stage, things stayed frosty between them for a very long time. The first person to extend an olive branch would be Kim right before the pandemic hit. The two actually live in the same neighborhood and began getting together for coffee and got to talking. Kim apologized for the past and gave Kathy her rights back. Naturally, news of Kathy and Kim reconnecting prompted suggestions of a reunion. Kathy, however, remains uncertain as she explained in her 2021 interview with News Chain Online. We always get asked, will we do anything together again? I feel like people have to understand that we've been doing this all of our lives. 
and it's very healthy to go to other plateaus. That was clearly evident when Kathy, joined by Nile Rogers, and not any of her sisters, put on a rendition of their 1979 hit during the 2021 presidential inauguration of Joe Biden. In the same News Chain Online interview, Kathy also touched on the current state of Sister Sledge. If you go to the Sister Sledge website, you see a photo of three faces you don't know, which is basically Debbie and her family. What we are trying to do is if a 14-year-old wanted to do a book report or essay on Sister Sledge, you should be able to pull up the authentic sisters. So we're working on that. And Kim and I get along fine. The current 2022 version of Sister Sledge, as seen on their website and social media, consists of Debbie, her daughter Camille, her son David, Joni's son Thaddeus, and friend Tanya Tiet. They also go by the name Sister Sledge featuring Sledgendary. So what happened to Kim? Well, another rumor going around is that things got rough between Kim and Debbie since Kim and Kathy made up. Apparently, Debbie's still not ready to bury the hatchet with her younger sister. Kathy, who did score a number one dance hit as a solo artist in 1992 with the track Take Me Back to Love Again, continues to do her solo thing on stage every chance she gets. As for the fans who desperately want to see the original lineup back together again, if I were you, I wouldn't hold my breath. 